from the city that never sleeps. 17 miles from Madison Square Garden, New York City. It's America at Night with Rich Valdez, America's favorite late night talk program, featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across America. And now, here is your host, Rich Valdez. Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media. Welcome to the Monday night edition of the program, live and national, 833-4825-337 is the phone number, 833-4-VALDEZ. And there's a bunch on my agenda today. The uh, United States has sent a fleet of aircraft carriers, or an aircraft carrier with a bunch of jets on it, to the Middle East. Uh, with anticipation of a strike from Iran on the Middle East, but, uh, excuse me, on Israel, per se. But there's a report from just a couple of hours ago that proxies from Iran struck at Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq, hurting several uh, several U.S. Uh, personnel. So the attack is on yet again, right? They've been attacking us all year. And the Biden administration, the Harris administration, nobody's done a damn thing to protect the men and women in uniform. Anyway, is this the beginning of World War III? Is that what this looks like? I don't know, but we're going to find out. We're going to talk about that with General Holt in a little bit. Uh, We also have a jobs report that was not really good, and the markets went tumbling. Japan was upside down. Things were looking horrible. The the Dow Jones was down 1,000 points. Uh, It rebounded a little bit. It It closed down 700 points. Uh, we're going to get to the bottom of that. Is this the uh, economic collapse of the United States? I don't think so, but we're going to find out from uh, former Office of Management and Budget White House economist Dr. Vance Ginn. He's going to join us a little bit later. you got to keep it locked right here to make sure you hear what he has to say on that. And again, I'm keeping your company straight till 1 o'clock Eastern time. And of course, Que Mala Eres is still being hailed as the best candidate ever, despite her miserable job performance ratings through her entire tenure as vice president and being labeled the worst vice president we've had in American history. Now she's all of a sudden the best thing ever. I want to know what's up with RFK Jr. We had him on the show. Is he still running? Is he dropping out? Is he endorsing Kamala? Is he, is he going to be going with Trump? I don't know. Plus there was also a write-in campaign, right? It was a long shot, um, uh, a write-in campaign from Joe Exotic, the Tiger King. We had him on the program before discussing his write-in campaign for president And uh, he's doing it from prison because he's incarcerated for 20 years. Anyway, I'd love to know what's going on with that. So we're going to have him on the program straight ahead as well. Don't go anywhere. Keep it locked in right here. And uh, a lot, a lot to discuss. The phone number, if you want to join us, 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. is America at Night with Rich Valdez. This call is from a federal prison. You will not be charged for this call. This call is from... Joe. This call will be recorded and subject to monitoring at any time. To accept this call, press 5. To block this call and all future calls, press 7. You may begin speaking now. Hey, Rich. Joe Exotic is live with us from federal prison. Joe Exotic, welcome back. Hey, I appreciate you always uh, giving me a platform, sir. Man, you got it, brother. Uh, We always want to hear what the Tiger King has to say. I understand you're in a new facility right now. Tell us. Yeah, I'm in the uh, Federal Medical Center in Fort Worth, Texas. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a little different with the phone than last time because after this 15-minute call, i got to wait 15 minutes, and then I'll call you back and give you another 15 minutes. But... uh, you know, I'm I'm here because I have to get blood transfusions every month, so uh, I'm I'm in this facility here, which is actually kind of kind of good because it's like a college dorm. There's no doors. You don't you don't have a cell. It's actually uh, two and four man dorms. Uh, oh, so it's and, like club you know, other fed. Than the fen- other than a fence around the place, it's it's not too bad. Very cool. 
Well, um, I'm glad things are going well for you in Club Fed as you're fighting cancer and dealing with everything you've got to deal with as you're fighting your case and trying to get justice. Uh, last time we spoke, you told us about how you were wrongfully entrapped by uh, a corrupt Department of Justice. And you were also telling us about your 2024 presidential campaign as a write-in candidate. What's up with that? All right. Well, you know, that that was uh, – I was actually given your show since you've, you've always done so good by me, uh, the, the opportunity to be the only one today to get, get the announcement, to make the announcement. And that is today me and my team suspended my campaign. Uh, wow. And I am publicly endorsing President Trump. Oh, snap. Now, this comes as a little bit of a surprise to me because I see you taking shots at him every now and again on the Internet and whatnot because you're exercising your free speech rights from jail. Um, well, how did you, you know, get to the you decision? Know, I, it, it, you know, people keep keep accusing me of flip flopping and stuff. But, you know, if, if somebody doesn't call out all of them. Uh, they never answer the public's questions, you know. Right. So, uh, you know, I've, I've stuck up for Trump since 2016. And, I, you know, I voted for him then. I voted for him, in t you know, uh, in the 2000. And uh, I would have voted for him in 2020, but I did vote for him in 2016. And, you know, Rich, the, the problem is right now, you know, People have to get past just the the minor things that affect us. I, I am all for, you know, pro-choice and reproductive rights and carrying a gun and all that, that stuff. But right now, we have to we have to really look at the future of people's kids and, and the future of, of us uh, because World War III is, is on our doorstep. And, you know, this thing that's going on today with, with Iran and Israel could drag us right in the middle of it. And I think a lot of it is to blame uh, because President Biden just has not been strong enough and tough enough. Uh, you know, we, did, we just did another prisoner swap, and his negotiating terms is This call is from a federal prison. Because America always comes out on the short end of the stick of these prisoner swaps. Uh, so yeah, and you weren't now, part of that swap. I, I've never been part of that swap. <laughs> you know, I, I'm almost starting to root for Putin here before long. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's it's getting to where it's scary for an American to even go overseas to another country because you're going to be kidnapped because America has just opened the door to, hey, you know, uh, arrest our people and we'll swap murderers for them. Yeah, and, and, I, it's, and I, believe, it's crazy. I believe Trump would not do this. Yeah, well, we have a track record with Trump of, of really not doing that. And again, Trump wasn't uh, perfect, but uh, I think he's definitely the best we've seen in a long time. So again, folks, I just want to remind everybody to just tuning in. We've got a phone call right now live from federal prison. Joe Exotic, the Tiger King, you know him from the Netflix series. And he uh, was doing a write-in campaign for president in 2024, bringing up lots of issues and has suspended his campaign today and chosen Rich Valdez, America at Night, as the exclusive program to announce the suspension of his campaign and his endorsement of Donaldus Magnus El Trumpito, the 45th president of these United States, Donald J. Trump. So Joe Exotic announcing his endorsement of Donald Trump. Now, Joe Exotic, you mentioned the the uh, conflict with Iran uh, a couple of hours ago. Uh, Iranian proxies in Iraq uh, fired rockets, uh, injuring several U.S. military members. Have you heard about that? Yeah, you know, I did, and and it's just the same thing that you know how many how many military bases around the world have of ours that have been attacked, and and we've really basically done nothing. We've shot a few empty buildings, uh, you know, right. but we just we're, we're just not the strongest country in America right now, and we have to be, and not just for our economy and everything else, but for our our very own survival and well being, uh, and and I just don't think. Harris or, or Biden uh, have what it takes to do that because they've they've showed for the last and a half years uh, that that they're weak uh, in this in this area. And you know, Trump, I, I don't agree with everything President Trump <laughs> comes out of his mouth. You know, there there's some crazy stuff that that man says. You know, like all drug dealers should be on death row. But then he picks a, a vice president that's mom was a heroin addict. So. I believe that, that endorsing President Trump 
and and getting my fan base behind him. I think I think I can. No, I want to be in his cabinet. I want to be the director of the Federal <laughs> Fish and Wildlife. Nice. Uh, that would and, be interesting. And right? I think I think we could get him to actually listen for a change now that he's uh, convicted of 34 felonies and he's still got some more to face. And uh, within an eighth of an inch, uh, he he wouldn't even have been here with that assassination attempt. So. Uh, I think he might have a little bit of wake-up call. And his his vice president pick, uh, J.D. Vance, uh, with his mom's drug addiction and going through all of that as a kid growing up, maybe he'll step back and say, you know, maybe all of these people that are in prison for conspiracy to do drugs that never had drugs uh, deserve a second chance to go home and, and, and work for their families instead of letting the taxpayers handle all this. Because... You know, Rich, there's no solution to this in here because there's more drugs in this fenced-in prison than there was in the whole city of Winniewood, Oklahoma. Wow. Now, Joe Exotic, uh, two things I want to talk about here. So number one is I did a podcast. Somebody invited me on their podcast recently, and we talked about this. Uh, this call and, and the, the federal audience prison. was largely a, a black audience, and he was telling me that we got into the conversation of the First Step Act and how – uh, some of the policies President Trump brought about really got a lot of people out of jail. And it's kind of how uh, a friend of mine called me from jail, similar to the way you're calling me, but not on the air. I was hoping I could get it on the air. And he was telling me how everybody on the tier that he was on was voting or, or at least supporting Trump from jail, hey, asking their baby's mom at home because they were pro-Trump. There's there's two million people incarcerated in this country right now, and and the problem is nobody in here has a voice. So that's why I appreciate you giving me a voice. You bet. Every person in the system is pro-Trump. <laughs> you know, I've been here with some January Sixers too that are in in this prison with me, uh, and it don't matter if you're black, brown, or or, or white or, or whatever. They all are pushing for Trump, and their families are pushing for Trump. But. You know, the First Step Act was a good thing uh, that was that was pushed and, and signed into law. It only takes a year off of your sentence. And then the problem is, is the staff, is they're so understaffed, and the, the thing in here is going to hell in a handbasket, that nobody keeps up with their time, your, you know, an inmate's time or points or whatever. And there's people in here that should have been home eight, ten months ago. Yeah. Now, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, because you made a comment about J.D. Vance, and uh, J.D. Vance, again, his parents faced addiction, his mom faced addiction, grew, grew up with his grandparents, and really had it rough growing up, and seems to have pursued and made and personified the American dream. What are your thoughts on choosing Vance as his running mate? Well, you know, I myself am, am, am more of a political person. I would have chose Nikki Haley because he needed the women's support, the support. But, yeah. you know, I, 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 the more I've, I think about it, and my vice president pick, you know, Thomas Wolf, uh, actually was working on uh, J.D. Vance's campaign as a senator. So uh, we've got a little bit of history with, with J.D. Vance, and uh, maybe he will be the person to set up there as vice president and say, look, you know, uh, President Trump, we, we need to help some of these people because putting them in, in jail and handing them drugs uh, for 7000 bucks an ounce for methamphetamines in prison is not solving the problem. And, uh, and maybe get some help like his mom got. Yeah. Folks, again, we're on with Joe Exotic, the Tiger King. You've seen him on the Netflix series. Uh, he's now incarcerated for conspiracy to uh, murder Carol Baskin. Uh, which is the charge that they, they put on him. And he says there's more drugs in jail than there were out in Florida. How's that working out for you in there? Well, you know, I've, I've just got the will to, to say no, and I'm going to walk out of here clean, and I'm going to walk out of here uh, successful. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm in a room with 16 grown men, and nine of them are comatose almost every minute of the day from, from smoking uh, what they call K2, which is basically bug spray on paper. Oh, yeah, it's like a synthetic um, marijuana. Yeah, yeah, and and it's a shame, Rich, because n not, none of this is to help anybody. Oh, without uh, a doubt. And, and all these people, you know, would have a better chance of staying clean if they just not locked in a building all day long with nothing to do but drink and, and do drugs. But, 
I got to get a politician to wake up first. Uh, my next goal is to get Senator Grassley and Senator Burba- Durbin uh, to get the Safer Detention Act out of committee and on the floor and voted on before November, because that will do anybody nonviolent, anybody non-sex offender uh, that has done 50 percent of their time and are 60 years old to go home. And that would that would take such a burden off of the prison system and the taxpayers because hell my my you know I would qualify for that I'm 61, and just my blood transfusions every month is thirteen thousand dollars. Wow, so lots of uh, taxpayer expense, folks. We're on with Joe Exotic, the Tiger King, and if we uh, get cut off. Um Abruptly, it's because the call from the federal prison ends at a certain time and he'll be calling us back. Now, Joe Exotic, in the couple of minutes that we have remaining, uh, what's the, 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 the feel that you're getting on Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, on her campaign? Everybody seems to be saying the polls are going through the roof because she's a black woman and she's going to be the first black woman president. Well, you know, uh, First of all, when you look at a poll, and this is what a lot of people don't even look at, you, you look at one of the polls at CNN or Fox, you know, I'm not going to just pick one or the other right now. Uh, you look at a poll, nobody reads the fine print at the bottom of that poll, and in most of those polls, it's only 1,000 to 3,000 people that took mm-hmm. that poll. Okay, so I, I'm not real scared of the polls. I, she's had some good crowds show up at, at her rallies. Uh, but I think as the next, you know, 100 days goes by, uh, more and more people are going to see through the smoke screen. And, you know, it's it's just, it, why is this all about the black vote? Why, why don't we just care about people as Americans? Uh, because let me tell you, she put more black people in prison than, than Trump ever even thought of, of trying to put in prison. And if you lived where I live right now, Rich, you would you would see that. The black and brown community has been basically kidnapped for legalized human trafficking because this is this is nuts that people are serving 20 and 30 year sentences uh, that never even got caught with drugs. And that's one thing that I'm going to really advocate for President Trump to push is we have to change the Constitution. And if our president has to be reelected every four years, a federal judge should be, too. Uh, because we have federal judges out here that are appointed by Democrats and by Republicans, and they don't stick to the same the same guidelines when they sentence you. It depends on which side they're on. Okay? And the problem with that is there's actual judges out there that have goals to sentence a million years before they retire or die. You know, and wow. we're not we're not just we're not just political numbers. Okay, we're we're people. And that's why they don't allow cameras in a federal courtroom, because they don't want it all videotaped and for the American people to see what really goes on with the feds. Because the feds, uh, they they convict you on hearsay where a state yeah. can't. Hey, this thing is going to hang up. I'll call you back in 15. All right, Joe Exotic, stand by. We're coming right back to you, folks. We're on with Joe Exotic live from federal prison. He's the star of the Tiger King endorsing Donald Trump exclusively on our program tonight. Folks, 833-4-VALDEZ is the phone number. Give us a call. We're coming right back with Joe Exotic. Best opinions. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. When you see what she's done to our nation, she's wrecking our nation. The radicalism will take back our country from the worst administration in American history. Biden was the worst president in the history of our country. She's acknowledged to be the worst vice president in the history of our country. That is 
Donaldus Magnus, El Trompito, saying that K. Malaeres is the worst vice president in our history. And amigos, welcome back. We continue to make late night radio great again with our guest calling us from federal prison, Joe Exotic, from the hit Netflix series, The Tiger King. He's just announced that he is no longer pursuing a write-in campaign for 2024, and he's putting his support along with his fans, the Tiger King fans, behind Donald Trump. Joe Exotic, welcome back. Hey, Rich, I appreciate you giving me give me the opportunity to do this on your show. Uh, you got to know that, especially when you're subbing in on 820, uh, 820 AM with WBAP here in Dallas-Fort Worth, you are the most listened to night show in prison. Wow. It's an honor. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I could have, I, I have no doubt that I could have pulled three or four million votes. Um, but I don't think we can afford to, to lose those as a candidate. Uh, and, and I've got to give that uh, effort to, to President Trump. So we can get somebody in there that's going to protect our country. Now, what do you think about RFK Jr.? Do you think that he's going to pull out and support Kamala or Trump? Uh, what do you think? You know, I, I was thinking about that today, and I really, in all my heart, hope that he pulls out and, and endorses President Trump. Uh, I know that he was running as a Democrat to start with before he changed as an independent, but so was I, uh, because I wanted to debate the the Biden or the Biden administration. But uh, you know, they, they nobody gave me that opportunity. Uh, but I'm I'm really hoping that that RFK does pull out because this race we we can't afford to waste any votes, and that's what my big decision was to pull out. Because three million votes could make a heck of a difference when only what eleven thousand made a difference in Georgia in 2020. Yeah, but ultimately, I think there was it was a, several states that were in play. But let's uh, switch gears a little bit. Um, I want to get your take on this this um, economic uh, downturn that we had today. The markets really took a nosedive in Japan. Uh, the United States, we also followed suit with the Dow going down a thousand points, I think closing at down 700 points. And, you know, there you've got Kamala Harris that, you know, she's more than happy to say, you know, Bidenomics is working. Joe Exotic, is Bidenomics working? It's, it's not. You know, I have I have my own crypto, uh, T. King on Solana out there, and it hurts. It hurts everybody. I mean, it, 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 look, the gas prices. Well, we're down thirty four cents from a year ago. Big deal. We're still above three dollars a gallon. Who can afford that? Uh, I couldn't do that when I was uh, owning the zoo to, to do that. And uh, groceries. Uh, you know, it's it's just crazy. I, I have. You know, my fiance works from home, and Uber eats a lot in, and, gee, it's, it's $25, $30 for one person to eat. Uh, it, it's crazy. No, Bidenomics is not working at all. And, you know, the thing I like about President Trump is we need to drill. We need to provide our own energy for this country. But the thing I don't understand about President Biden is he's all about clean uh, clean environment, uh, saved environment, uh, all of this, but instead of putting windmills on dry land, we're, we're putting them in the ocean, uh, which is probably the most delicate ecosystem we have on our planet, uh, is, is the reefs and everything to eat the carbon monoxide out of the water, uh, out of the air. But, yeah, no, nothing makes sense right now. Our country is in such a spiral direction down. Uh, out, of, out of the two, you know, there, there was four of us, I believe, still adequately yeah. running. Uh, out of the two, the, the, the main two, we have to have President Trump. That's all there is to it. Amen to that. Now, listen to this, Joe Exotic. Uh, Congressman Jamie Raskin, uh, he says that they need to use the 14th Amendment, to, to use the Constitution, to stop Trump as soon as he's elected president of the United States. So presuming he wins, they want to use the Constitution to stop him. Listen to this real quick. What can be put into the Constitution can slip away from you very quickly. And the greatest example going on right now before our very eyes is Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which they're just disappearing with a magic wand as if it doesn't exist, even though it could not be clearer what it's stating. And so... You know, they want to kick it to Congress, so it's going to be up to us on January 6, 2025, to tell the rampaging Trump mobs that he's disqualified. And then we need 
bodyguards for everybody in civil war conditions, all because the nine justices, not all of them, but these justices who have um, not many cases to look at every no, year, no. not that much work no. to do, a huge <laughs> staff, great protection, simply do not want to do their job and interpret what the great 14th Amendment means. Now, it's not clear whether Raskin was actually outlining a plan of action to keep Trump out of office or using a hypothetical to argue that the U.S. Supreme Court was placing what he considered an undue burden on Congress to keep Trump in office, which is crazy and asinine in and of itself. But this idea of a civil war and risking that and getting bodyguards to everybody, Joe Exotic, what do you make of that? Hey, uh, to me, it sounded exactly like the, the blueprints of a plan. Again, we're, we're going we're gonna to go through another four years of, of nothing but trying to impeach a man and get him out of office and everything else. When, when are we just going to accept what the American people vote into office uh, instead, of, instead of the politicians deciding this for us after we vote someone in? But the, it, it's just crazy, Rich, what's going on uh, in, in this country. But it's definitely a blueprint. It absolutely is. Yep. Folks, we're on with Joe Exotic, the Tiger King. We're coming back for one last segment with him. If you want to call us right afterwards, give us a call, 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. Well, thank you, Rich, and thank you for everything. I know you very well, and I have I listen, but I have a lot of people that listen, and they love your show, and I appreciate it very much. America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, amigos, welcome back. We continue our conversation from federal prison with the Tiger King himself, Joe Exotic. He's the star of the hit Netflix series, The Tiger King and was uh, indicted and sentenced to 21 years in prison for conspiring to assassinate Carol Baskin. He says he was entrapped. It was a fake phony fraud case from the Department of Justice. He's fighting it, and he's um, hopeful to get a new trial date and even asking El Trumpito for a pardon. Not sure if that's going to happen till the end of a term, if it happens at all. But there's some news, Joe Exotic, about one of your, um, I'm going to call him a colleague, although I don't know if he is, uh, Dagavan Antle, uh, who is also uh, uh, a tiger man of, of sorts. And he's now being uh, sentenced to, to federal prison as well. Absolutely. Doc Antel, uh, let me tell you, the, the, the whole reason that me and him have, are even mixed up in being charged with this stuff is, I don't know if you're aware of it, uh, Rich, but, you know, Vice President Harris bragged on her Twitter, and my people got a screenshot of it here about three weeks ago and put it on my social media, bragging about, hey, everybody go watch the Tiger King because I sponsored the Big Cats Safety Act for Carol Baskin. Okay, so me and Doc Entail were used as examples uh, to, to pass the Big Cat Safety Act. We're, we're political prisoners in our own country uh, to pass a law giving Carol Baskin and the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries and the AZA a, a monopoly on tigers in America because they're the only two that are exempt from this law. And And... You know, what What they wanted to do is they wanted to stop private ownership and private breeding of tigers. And if tigers and, – and then an article just came out two days ago uh, that they've been debunked that there wasn't 20,000 tigers in America. There's only only not even 800, okay? Uh, so – the, the politicians don't do any homework. They just vote on a law. They take money from the lobbyists, and, and that's what our country rides on. But between her uh, co-sponsoring the Big Cat Safety Act and, and Senator Mendez, the one that was just convicted of— Oh, Bob those, Menendez. Gold bar yeah, Bob. He, he co-sponsored it with her, okay? So that that's how much the big cat safety act got pushed for carol uh through congress uh that um, it's from the top 
And my pardon that I had on the desk of, of President Biden's actually got rejected seven months ago. So uh, President Biden's not going to help change anything. This call is from a federal prison. thing that I would like uh, everybody that's listening to your show tonight uh, to yeah. do is go to joeexoticofficial.com. Uh, get the evidence to the link to drop down and go watch the videos of the government's hitman admitting to perjury and that he made it all up. But he goes one step further and he takes my lawyers and Netflix's film crew to the zoo and shows them where he hid a murder weapon where their original plan was to kill me if they couldn't get me in prison to get the zoo away from oh, me. I didn't know that. Have your people yeah, send that to me because I've seen the legal documents from your lawyer, but I haven't seen the video. Oh, go watch the videos. It's insane, Rich. Uh, that They've all admitted to perjury and the Department of Justice is so hell-bent on their conviction rate that they leave me in here. Well, and if, I mean, if what you're saying is true and the conspiracy holds, then it makes sense if the radical left, like PETA and the rest of those animal rights groups say, you know, we hate this guy. He has his own private zoo. He's abusing the animals. We don't like him. So we're going to do everything we can to destroy him and every other private zoo owner. And we're going to use our politician friends like, i.e., uh, Sen- then Senator Kamala Harris and Goldbar Bob to get it done. Uh, they'll come after you. And, and that's just how the government works. I, it's, they weaponized the Department of Justice just like they did against President Trump. If they don't like you, I mean, look at Andrew Tate now. He's going through the same thing just because of what he has an opinion. Right. Uh, insane. Folks, we're on with Joe Exotic, the Tiger King from the hit Netflix series. This is a show that uh, when it was COVID time, my uh, then probably the 18 or 19 year old daughter, uh, she comes to me and she's like, Dad, have you seen the Tiger King? Everybody's talking. About it. I was like, yeah, I hear about it all the time. I, I don't know what that is. And she made me sit down. She said, just watch one episode. And I watched one episode and I watched eight hours, the whole series, one shot. You know, I got to watch it three weeks ago for the first time because we're suing Netflix uh, for using my footage without permission and using my music and stuff. But, and, and for oh, wow. defamation. Wow. I was, so you didn't I make any actually, money on that deal? I had not a dime. Unbelievable. Yeah, I, At least you're famous. I, I was there. I was, in prison when, good. <laughs> I was in prison when that was coming out and being filmed. But what upsets me about the whole Tiger King thing mm-hmm. is, you know, Saf, the girl that lost her arm. Yeah. Uh, you know, they filmed her sitting in a junkyard. And then they got John Finley, my ex, with no shirt on the whole time. And then they got the hitman in the bathtub. The, the thing was not even a true documentary. If right, they, right. If they, they pieced they, it together <laughs> to make it tell the story they wanted to tell. Oh, yeah. my God. Joe Exotic, we're, all, we're, uh, we're about out of time. Give everybody the website one more time. Uh, it's joeexoticofficial.com. And uh, go to the evidence link, watch the videos, and, and send me a message on Instagram so my team can see what you think of, of you how they've all admitted to perjury. But uh, Folks, again, we're on with Joe Exotic, the Tiger King. He's endorsed President Trump. He's suspended his write-in campaign for 2024. Joe Exotic, any final words? you got 10 seconds. You know, I, I tell everybody around the world I love them. I appreciate the support. That's what's kept me going all this time. Rich, you brought, I thank you, you so it. much, sir. Thank you. God bless you. And tell everybody you, thanks for listening to the show. You too. All right, folks. Joe Exotic, the Tiger King, live from federal prison. And uh, we're going to continue straight ahead with your calls and more. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. Is a budding radio star, by the way. Richie Valdez is terrific. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. She mentioned his many accomplishments, including his forceful leadership of the NATO summit with other Western heads of state. So he was in a, a good place to make whatever decision, the top of his game. 
such a consequential president of the United States, a Mount Rushmore kind of president of the United States, Are want to really know what comes next. That he belongs up there on Mount Rushmore. Right. Lincoln and Joe Biden. But you got Teddy Roosevelt up there, and he's wonderful. I don't say take him down, but you can add Biden. You can add Biden. That's Nancy Pelosi. Nancy La Bruja Pelosi. She was on 60 Minutes uh, yesterday morning with, um, actually on 60, excuse me, CBS Sunday morning, not 60 Minutes, with Leslie Stahl. And <laughs> she says that Joel Baboso Biden should be on Mount Rushmore. Now, this is a classic because I've never heard something so crazy that Joe El Baboso Biden should be on Mount Rushmore. But you know what? I think she said it just to get him back into the news because there's too much emphasis on Kamala Harris. And Kamala Harris, the problem that she's facing now is she's kind of getting a, a pass on a lot of things. Oh, she's black. Oh, she's Indian. Oh, she's VP. Oh, she's it. She just won the nomination without even presenting herself for a primary, without even having an actual vote at the DNC convention. All that aside... She's riding this wave, but eventually she has to show up, right? Donald Trump, uh, they said, hey, sir, um, Joe Biden wants to debate you, and he's, uh, and we want to do it on CNN. And he said, you name the time and the place, I'm there. So he did it. Then Kamala Harris said, I want to debate him. Tell him to show up when she tried to do it. El Trumpito did. The only difference was she was not the nominee for, for vice president, or for president, I should say. She was only the vice president. So why would he accept He's trying to be president. He's trying to beat their candidate. And they did not endorse her, right? At that moment, uh, Obama had not said that he was on board. Nobody said that they were on board. So why would he? I wouldn't give her the time of day either if I were him. So she finally gets the endorsement from Obama. They do a virtual roll call with her and no other candidates uh, for the Democrat National uh, Convention um, nomination. And on this virtual roll call, she wins because she's unopposed. Okay, super. So now that she is the, the uh, winner of the proposed um, nomination, the presumptive nominee, Trump says, you bet. And since I did CNN last time, let's do Fox News this time. And it's not like Fox News is best friends with Trump, right? They've been pretty shady to him over the years. Um, I think even like not covering him for, for like a whole straight year, they banned the guy. So it's not like Fox News is... A, a, incredibly uh, pro-Trump, right? It's not like it's Newsmax, which I would say is, is largely pro-Trump. Pro it's like saying, if you did a debate on my show, who do you think I'm rooting for? I'm rooting for Trump. So Fox News, he says, I'll do the debate in Fox News. And she says, no, 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 I'm not going to do it on Fox News. She's full of it. She's fake. She's phony. She's fraud. She's scared. Why are you scared, Kamala? Why are you scared? Anyway, uh, I think that uh, she's full of it. Anyway, before we run out of time, I want to... Um, go to a call. Let's go to Bedford, Indiana, WBIW. Check in with Sarah. Sarah, go right ahead. Hey, Rich, I just wanted to say I enjoyed you having uh, Joe Exotic and Cohen from prison on your show. I don't have TV <laughs> hookup since 2010, so I've not ever watched it, but I'm going to tell you something. I want to congratulate Joe, and if he's listening, he showed fantastic political acumen in deciding to bow out for his race and put his support to Trump. Um, this is the type of uh, political thinking that right-wingers need to think of. Hey, you know what? Let's not split the vote. We're at a very uh, tenuous moment in history. And, I mean, he, the intelligence he displayed in doing that, well, I'm sure he has strong opinions about stuff and probably differs a little bit than Trump. But just, just that um, intelligence to, to decide, you know what? This is a very important election. We can't split the vote of people who are tired of the Democratic tyranny. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Excellent. And you know what? Right back at you. You always make some great comments and your political astuteness is uh, is up there with the rest of them. Thank you, Sarah, for your call. Big shout out to everybody listening in Indiana. W.B.I.W. in the building. And folks, we're coming right back. Rich Valdez, your liberty loving Latino amigo. I'm happy to be with you straight till 1 a.m. Eastern time. The phone number is 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. Straight ahead, the big news of the day. Will Iran trigger World War III? We're going to talk about that with General Holt, plus the economy. We're going to talk about that with Vance Ginn. Big crash today. Don't go anywhere. I'm Rich Valdez.
from the city that never sleeps. 17 miles from Madison Square Garden, New York City. It's America at Night with Rich Valdez, America's favorite late night talk program, featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across America. And now, here is your host, Rich Valdez. Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media. Your liberty-loving Latino amigo, happy to be with you this Monday night. We're live, we're national. The phone number is 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. And there is so much to discuss. Uh, we've got the U.S. moving warships uh, into the Middle East region because of the threat from Iran, the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. Uh, the Iranian proxy groups have hit uh, several U.S. service members at Al-Assad Air Force Base in Iraq. And, of course, this comes after uh, a whole morning of tumult, right? There's a, a lot going on. There was uh, a big uh, sell-off all over the place global market sell-off. Dow Jones plunged more than 1,000 points. I think it closed at uh, down 700. Big, bad, bloody-looking day for the market. Started, I think, in Japan. Things were going horrible there, and it kind of continued to hear, and that doesn't help with the jobs report that just came out. And again, the jobs report that every month seems to be stellar, right, until they adjust for it, and then afterwards, it's not so stellar anymore. I mean, it's like a, an old game that's getting really, really old, really, really quick. And it makes you wonder, is Bidenomics working? This phenomena of Bidenomics that, uh, by most accounts, is not working because this was the number one concern for most Americans, inflation, the economy. And it was only replaced by the border and the crisis that we have there a few months ago. And... Yet Kamala Harris, she's been on the record time and time again saying that Bidenomics is working because she endorses Bidenomics because she is the henchman to Joe Biden, right? She is the evil right hand. And uh, there's an interesting mashup of clips, a little montage that we have of news reports from today combined with Kamala saying how great Bidenomics is. This is pretty clever as put together by the Trump campaign. Listen to this. Here we go. Look at them go down. What some would call history in the making. Don't say that. We have never been down a thousand points ever, not even intraday on the Nasdaq. Bidenomics is working. It's working. The stock market just taking a big old nosedive this morning. Dow Jones is down about a thousand and ten points. That is called Bidenomics. <laughs> the Dow fell more than 600 points Friday on a weaker than expected jobs report. 5%. Meta, 6%. Amazon, 6%. Apple, 9% down. Bidenomics is working. Fears of a recession began after Friday's disappointing July jobs report. Bidenomics is working. A rise like that is historically a sign that a recession is imminent. This is Bidenomics. What you're seeing right now, the stock market, is what Americans have been feeling for the last three years. It's just a manifestation of it right now. All that is called Bidenomics. That is Bidenomics, and it doesn't look good. Doesn't look good for Kent Malaitis, especially when they have all that tape where they're going to continue to remind America that they're responsible for the situation that we're in. And we've talked about this time and time again, but we haven't seen what we've seen today. And I'm wondering, is this a uh, flash in the pan? Is this something we can expect moving forward? I mean, this stuff, to me, pretty scary, right? Most people don't want to go through this stuff. Well, I want to get to the bottom of this. And, um, and we are going to get to the bottom of this with somebody who really understands what's going on. And that's Dr. Vance Ginn. Uh, he's a Ph.D. economist who's the president of Ginn Economic Consulting. He's the host of Let the People Prosper podcast. And he's also the former uh, associate director of the White House Office of Management and Budget, uh, the director for uh, associate director for economic policy. Vance Ginn, welcome back, sir. Hey, Rich, it's a pleasure with you. Likewise, my man, likewise. 
So you just heard some of those reports from Fox Business and other outlets uh, just going through the numbers today as we were watching the bloodbath in the markets. Uh, this plays well for, for Trump politically, uh, making the case that they're incompetent and inept at, at their fiscal management of, of America's monetary system and, and everything else that they deal with. But ultimately, um, uh, my question for you is, can we expect more of this? And did you expect to see this today? Yeah, Rich, I mean, there was a lot going on, and I, d- I did hear those other comments by President Biden, Kamala Harris, and others who are more on the left, right? And, I mean, they're just trying to make up any excuse that they can for the current situation. Uh, before long, we're going to hear that it's from corporate America, it's from the entrepreneurs and, and the elite, and anyone else that they can blame, and probably it's because of income inequality. But right. what I can pull <laughs> it down to is that the problem really is the excessive government spending at the federal level by Congress and that has been pushed in place by Biden and Harris over the last nearly four years, running up massive deficits and debt that we haven't seen since World War II. I mean, we're at 125 percent of GDP when you look at our debt to GDP, GDP ratio. That's just massive. And then the Federal Reserve has pumped you know, trillions of new dollars into our economy at the same time that Biden and Harris were restricting economic growth from higher taxes and more spending, more debt, higher interest rates, and more regulations. What do we expect but to have higher inflation? And that inflation, Rich, you know, it goes across the economy, but a lot of it goes into these asset prices. And that's really what I've been focused on is how much of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet goes into all these other assets in our economy and it filters through to the stock market. And it props it up, not based on valuations and earnings, but based on how much nominal growth from increase in the money supply that we've seen. So I expected this to happen. I, I couldn't tell you the exact date, but it's going to happen at some point. And unfortunately, Rich, it's going to get worse before it gets better because I don't think that they're just going to let this problem clear it, clear the market through through the market activity. They're going to want to put more money into it and have the Federal Reserve cut interest rates, probably put more money into the economy. And that's going to make this bad situation even worse, unfortunately. Man, Vance Ginn, again, uh, former OMB associate director at the White House. As, a, as a, an economist, you look at this and and I know we've had John plenty of times in the past where you've you've called them out for their excessive spending and saying this was eventually going to happen and we're seeing it happen. But explain to us the connection between Japan's markets. How did that happen there? Uh, did it have anything to do with with our excessive spending? Are we at the top and this is just starting to trickle down to other economies? Yeah, I think that's right, uh, Rich. I mean, yeah, and we've, we, you and I have talked about this several times before, and I think some of this started, um, of course, from the, the, the trade that goes on between currencies. So people were buying a lot of dollars. The dollar was um, overvalued in a lot of ways compared to the Japanese yen. Well, that trade started to unwind over the last few days, and it really got going whenever, as you opened um, here in this segment, with the weakness in the labor market here in the United States. I mean, the Friday jobs report was just abysmal. It was a very weak jobs report. They said 114,000 jobs were added in the month of July. But when you exclude 17,000 government workers and you exclude about 29,000 um, revisions, revised downwards in the prior two months, meaning that fewer jobs were actually created by about 29,000, you're only looking at about 69,000 productive private sector jobs that were added across the entire economy. And then you look at the employment report. That's from the non-farm report. You look at the, the household employment report. It's only up, Rich, about 500000 over the entire year. It's essentially flat for the entire year. And the unemployment rate went up from 4.1% to 4.3%. And it was at 3.5% a year ago. So we're almost a full percentage point higher. I say all that because these are big indicators of a recession in the United States economy. And I don't use that lightly. I don't want to just you know, throw around the R word, <laughs> if you will. But, but I do think that these are some major headwinds across the economy. And so a lot of people thought, you know, Jap- Japanese um, markets were open before we were here on Monday, right? Uh, just given the timing and everything else. And so we got to see the effects of what that means for the global economy. And people were started selling off the Japanese stocks, a major hit. And then when we opened today here in the United States, the S&P 500 took a 3% hit today. 
and is now down 8.5% from July 15th, which was its all-time high. So we're almost in correction territory now, even as the Japanese uh, stock market just went into correction territory. So there is this contagion effect that happens across the globe whenever the United States economy goes down. And unfortunately, it's very fragile, if not cracking at the seams um, currently. So with that being said, do we expect to see this in more uh, countries that trade U.S. currency, or do you think it, it's contained for today? Is tomorrow going to be another disaster? Yeah, you know, it, it's always tough to forecast the future. <laughs> uh, but I guess that's what, we do. we're, that's what we're in the business of doing to some extent because we've got to know how this is going to influence Americans at the end of the day, right? right? And I think we have seen this in other countries already. Stock markets are already going down. We are seeing the Japanese stock market is going back up. In fact, it's up 10% um, so far today in, in, current, in, in their trading. <laughs> um, but remember that a 10% fall means you need about a 20% increase to get back to where you were before. So even yeah, the 10% increase even. today... Right, right. Doesn't get you back to where you need to be. Um, and so we might see, you know, a bounce back tomorrow here in the U.S. I, I, might, I would expect us not to have a huge sell off, um, but we're still going to be well down from where we were just a couple of days ago. And that may continue to happen across the global economy. And I expect for more of this to happen, though, Rich, because the Federal Reserve balance sheet is still seven point two trillion dollars. And it was four trillion dollars before the pandemic. And, and to get to dive in a little bit, bit deeper, back in 2008, before the great financial crisis and the Fed started, the Federal Reserve started pumping all this money into the economy, um, right. the Federal Reserve's balance sheet was $800 billion, which was 6% of GDP. Today, at $7.2 trillion, it's 25% of GDP. <laughs> and so this has to wow. correct at some point, or we're going to continue to see massive asset bubbles across the economy. Would you say today is something... Uh... Some are saying it was a healthy correction. Would you agree with that statement? Mm. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, we've, we've, the economy has been built on government failures over, over the last three, four years. I mean, this is ongoing even longer than that with the amount of excessive government spending. But I think those years of the Trump administration, we had the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. We had the deregulation that was taking place. There was too much spending. We could talk about some of the trade stuff. But the economy was really flourishing, and, and, and it showed across the, across the income spectrum, across races and genders and everything else. Um, it was really booming, but the last four years have been really rough on Americans. And so I think we've got some more time to go before this really corrects. And it, and it won't correct if government continues to try to solve government failures with more government. <laughs> and that's what they seem to always want to do. Right. Folks, we're on with Vance Ginn. He's... Uh... The he was the associate director for economic policy at the White House Office of Management and Budget. He was an economist in the Trump administration. We're coming right back. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Congratulations on just an amazing show. I know you've worked so hard in the industry, and nobody deserves it more than you do. So I'm happy to see you really succeeding here. It's awesome. America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, amigos, we continue our conversation uh, with a former White House economist, Vance Ginn. Now, uh, Vance Ginn, what do you say to people? I get this question a lot, and uh, I know what I say, but I'm really curious to know what you say. Uh, people constantly um, will approach me and say, look, anytime there's any type of market volatility, they'll say, that's it. It's the controlled demolition of the economy. This is what Trump was here to do. Bring down the dollar so we can replace it with a new currency. Uh, I hear this often. I don't believe that this is the case. I think everybody's trying their best to protect the dollar. But what do you say to people who say something like that to you? Well, I mean, I've heard that too. Um, I don't, I don't believe that to be the case. I mean, I know that there's been times where uh, 
Former President Trump would say we need want to devalue the dollar, uh, but it wasn't to crash the dollar. It was more of a position of trade and how you know dealing with your imports and exports and that sort of thing. Um, whenever you know what you look at today and you say, all right, well, what's happening to the dollar? The dollar was actually appreciating and it's been appreciating recently. Um, uh, sorry, depreciating against the Japanese yen, but but also it's been going down in value um, today. Was was gold? So usually what you have happen is you'll see the dollar go down tremendously in value and, and the gold up. prices go up. Right, nice. right. But we had the inverse relationship. So to me, that doesn't indicate a crash of the dollar. It indicates that people were selling off all these assets that are overpriced <laughs> across, the, across the markets um, and getting out of it, basically getting to you know, a, a flight to safety. Uh, and usually that goes to gold, but it's indicating to me that there are more underlying problems than just what we'd normally see in these sort of situations. And, and that's reflective of what we were talking about earlier with all this excessive government spending and the money printing by the Federal Reserve is it's, you know, it's really changed a lot of the market dynamics. The, the prices don't indicate the value to consumers like they once did because they're all being manipulated <laughs> by what the government does. And, and so when you get in those situations, it makes it difficult for investors to know like which assets to get into and which to not. Um, but I think for us who are looking at this, it's also a way to say, you know what, you know, maybe, maybe gold and other physical assets are something that's going to be there for the longer run compared to the volatility that we'll see in the market and stock market and other places. Right. Yeah. And that makes sense. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, to summarize, you're saying yeah. not a controlled demolition of the U.S. dollar, not bringing right. down the dollar to usher in a new currency, which is great. And I repeat that for all of yeah. my friends in the audience. <laughs> but ultimately, yes. the uh, and we have, um, I don't know, maybe about two minutes uh, before we got to go. But uh, okay. I, I, my, my, my sense here is that the, the dollar will eventually be strengthened and perhaps go on a gold standard in at some point in the future or it'll continue to be devalued is does that sound yeah. right to you yeah that sounds right to me um and, and 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 why would it be devalued well a couple of reasons one is is if we keep running massive deficits and debt and we're and, and just right. net interest payments on the debt alone are over a trillion right then we could have a default situation that would which would plummet the dollar um, you would also have higher inflation, which devalues the dollar <laughs> and, and other, other situations. So those things are a major factor, which I think could push us to a harder currency again, like gold um, and, and other things. And, and what's interesting, Rich, is some of these countries like the BRICS, the, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, do you Brazil think we'll be and, joining the BRICS or do you think we're competing we might. against them? Well, I think we're competing them with them right now, but we might join them in buying more gold because they're actually selling off a lot of the dollars right now and buying gold, which indicates to me that they also see something else happening along the horizon. And so that may be a direction that, you know, we need to be going as well. But do you think that they're, and, and they're selling off gold the dollar, because though, they're trying to create a crypto to, to challenge the U.S.? Maybe uh, that, that, that could happen. Um, and, and look, I, I'm for competitive currencies. I just don't think that those cryptocurrencies will be able to compete with the dollar right now, um, given the situation. But, but I, I like for them to be a part of the portfolio for governments right. to consider. Be part of the conversation. Vance, again, always a pleasure. I appreciate your expertise and your time. You're a gentleman, a scholar, and a patriot, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure with you. You bet. Folks, we're coming right back. Make sure you check him out and check out his podcast as well. Let the people prosper. Don't go anywhere. Up next, General Holt on a potential World War III. I'm Rich Valdez. Across America to the liberty loving Latino Rich Valdez. This is America at Night 
with Rich Valdez. The Pentagon is confirming to News Nation that a rocket attack hit outside the Al Assad Air Base in western Iraq, injuring several American personnel who were stationed there. It's unclear at this moment who launched the attack, but it does look to be launched by Iranian proxies. President Biden has been briefed. We are monitoring the developments. This news, of course, comes as Israel is on high alert, bracing for a large-scale attack from Iran and or its proxies, if not properly calibrated, of course. This could all throw the United States and the wider region into a bloody conflict. That's Elizabeth Vargas uh, with uh, News Nation. And that is what happened earlier today where um, several U.S. Um, service members and uh, defense people were uh, targeted by Iranian proxy people. And, and I'm being vague because I'm about to get the clarification at Al-Assad Air Force Base, right? It says U.S. and coalition forces, so it's, it's uh, a little bit vague as it is. This is in addition to the now four aircraft carriers that have moved into the Middle East. And again, we've seen the United States posture before to show strength and to show solidarity and that type of thing. But I've never seen Iran be this um, aggressive. Now, granted, I'm 46. So when the last time Iran was acting up during the Carter years, I wasn't even around. So I'm going to bring in somebody who's done this a few times and has a better perspective on it than I. Retired Brigadier General Blaine Holt. Now, you guys know Blaine Holt. You see him on Newsmax all the time. He's the former deputy representative to NATO for the United States, uh, former United States Air Force uh, pilot and general. And he's our guest now. Blaine Holt, welcome, sir. Oh, it's so good to be back with you, Rich. Uh, although it's under very, very tough circumstances, we are literally at the brink. But I am honored to be on your show this evening. Thank you, brother. And, and me too, right? Um, I, uh, I, I, I would love to talk about happier things, but it seems like we're in bad shape. Talk to me about what's going on. You know, we are spiraling. We are <clears throat> taking something that started really at the fall of Afghanistan. If you look how we turned on our back, our back on the Afghans who stood with us, our allies, our partners, and we turned it into one of the largest military disasters. It's so important to recognize that because that national security team is the one that brought us war in Europe, war in North Africa, war, uh, the, the possibility of war in Asia. And, and now what could be the final match in a dry forest that brings us World War III in the Middle East. You've got... Israel that we have not stood behind this entire time. We have looked the other way while we've helped the mullahs fund themselves for billions and billions of dollars to fill the coffers of their proxies, um, aiming their weapons at Israel. <clears throat> and now this evening, we find ourselves in a place where Iran, who feels they've been slighted because one of their terrorists were killed, and they're trying to make a world case that the loss of Ishmael Hania is somehow. <laughs> general, do we still have you? I think the deep state got the general as soon as he said the loss of Ishmael Hania. And I was having trouble pronouncing that name. Uh, as we work to get the general back on the line and away from the deep state again uh, on Saturday, the United States. Uh, dispatched an aircraft carrier, the USS Abraham Lincoln, to the Middle East. It is the fourth U.S. Uh, carrier sent to respond to the ongoing crisis in the Middle East since October, and they're still there, the rest of them. Uh, the other three were when um, October 7th happened, and we sent some stuff down there to send that initial show of force. So now we've got four aircraft carriers there, and that didn't stop anything because as it's been reported several hours earlier, U.S. personnel were injured in a suspected rocket attack earlier today, Monday, and it happened at Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq. And uh, the um, statement that came from them, from, um, from the United States official, 
is we can confirm that there was a suspected rocket attack today against U.S. and coalition forces at Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq. The initial indications are that several U.S. personnel were injured. Base personnel are conducting a post-attack damage assessment. End quote. And that is, uh, again, an unnamed um, U.S. official making that statement. But tensions are very high in the Middle East, and I think we have General Hope back. So, General... <laughs> Do we actually act on this one before? I mean, I feel like I'm having deja vu here. I've had you on the show before when they've struck air bases, whether it was the Houthis or somebody else, and and we don't do anything. And I think that's why they keep doing it, at least in my rudimentary understanding of life. If you punch me in the face and I don't do anything to you, you're going to punch me again, right? Yeah, and, and, the, and I'm sorry that for whatever happened there, I guess the Chinese don't want us talking, but yeah. the, what I would say is is that, the rockets, we become numb to the fact that our forces on these bases like Al-Assad, and I've been there many times, uh, get targeted by these rockets. These rockets kill people. They injure and maim people. And uh, we have not stuck up for our forces. We have not let them defend themselves through this entire process. So here we are with all of our weakness, with all of the billions of dollars that we have put into Iran by looking the other way, and now we hope that they'll show some restraint uh, as, as Hania takes a fall and, and with uh, Israel looking at us saying, you won't stand by us, so we have to take care of our, our problems now. This is what sets the stage for something that could be a much broader conflict. Russia's Shoigu, number three to Putin, just left Tehran. So that make that begs the question, if they are going to go large against Israel, is Russia involved as well? Wow. What do you think about that? Do you, do you think that Russia is in the business of getting into other people's fights or do they just like taking over parts of Ukraine? Well, I think I think Putin is the ultimate opportunist. He is looking at the chessboard. He is also looking at the possibility that President Trump will return uh, in the next term. And so all of the bad guys are looking at the shot clock and saying, where are my opportunities? What can I accomplish before a president Trump comes back? And, and then should Russia be aligned with, uh, uh, Iran as it, as it goes against Israel. And I think the, clearly the airlift aircraft that have offloaded weapons in Tehran over this last week and Shoigu's presence there indicates our answer. Um, so the question is, if Iran gets backed into a corner, what happens here at home? Because that border czar, Vice President Harris, has looked the other way while millions of fighting age men have come into this country, many from the proxy terror groups that Iran could activate at any time. Anybody who thinks this war stays in the Middle East and doesn't touch us here at home, Oh, oh, you're in for a very big surprise. I'm very worried about that. Folks, we're on with uh, retired Brigadier General Blaine Holt, uh, United States Air Force, retired former deputy uh, representative to NATO for the United States. And uh, General Holt, you were uh, a a pilot, a commander up in the air. And I want to get a a little bit better uh, understanding of things when we come back. Folks, stick with us. We're coming right back with General Holt. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. Rich Valdez, who, again, will do a fine job, but I know you'll enjoy listening to him. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. But, John, separate and apart from private conversations, the question is whether President Biden thinks Prime Minister Netanyahu is trying to avoid a deal. 
I, I will let the prime minister speak to his position when it comes to uh, a hostage deal, and I certainly won't characterize the president's uh, assessment of the prime minister. We've conveyed our position quite clearly uh, in the president's public remarks, in the president's private remarks. We see Israeli negotiators uh, at the table working towards finalizing an arrangement. We think that is exactly what they should be doing. So you believe that Prime Minister Netanyahu is doing everything he can to get a deal? What I believe is there is not currently a deal in place. There should be a deal in place, uh, and we are putting as much pressure as we can and working to facilitate uh, as much as possible with all sides uh, to try to get this deal established, because we think that is fundamentally good for Israel, good for its security, certainly good for the Palestinians uh, who live in Gaza, and good for the region to try to turn the temperature down on this entire situation. That is John Finer, Deputy National Security Advisor on CNN yesterday with Dana Bash. And isn't it interesting to you, it is to me, that every question is asked from the perspective that Netanyahu is doing something wrong. Netanyahu, the Israelis, the IDF, the Jews are doing something to exacerbate this, this problem. They've created this problem. Meanwhile, from my perspective and understanding, and again, I'm not anti-Palestine in any way. Uh, But from my perspective, on October 7th, it was the terrorists within Palestine, known as Hamas, that came across the border, went into Israel, went to the music festival, went to the small villages, torched them, slaughtered babies, all of that, right? Uh, Massive, massive carnage, over a thousand people killed. And this is the response. Now, you can say, oh, the response is heavy-handed, or last week there were eight IDF soldiers that were caught doing the wrong thing. Okay, I understand that that's bad. We also had some American soldiers that did the wrong thing at Abu Ghraib. Okay, understand. Um, Not everybody's on the up and up all the time. But it doesn't change the fact that somehow the bad actor here is Netanyahu. I I just find that very interesting, my uh, editorial there. Anyway, uh, I want to get back to our guest, Brigadier General Blaine Holt. You've seen him on Newsmax. Uh, You've uh, heard him on this program a number of times. He's one of our favorites here. And uh, he is the uh, former deputy representative to NATO. He's flown a bunch of missions, something like 4,000 hours in the air. And General Holt, you've spent time in Fallujah. You've been on the ground in a lot of places. You've visited, I don't know, some some crazy number of, uh, of countries that my passport doesn't have enough pages for. What do you think of what John Finer just said? Well, it's good to be here. I I just think that they have cognitive dissonance about what is really happening in this world and what the relationship is between the United States and Israel. They're treating Israel as if they are the defendant in some court case, and they're looking for every possible way to back up their appeasement strategy of Iran, because you you we say the word hamas you're really saying the word iran if you say the word the houthis you're saying the word iran hezbollah you're saying the word iran but yet if that's the head of the snake this administration has fed this snake to the point where it's getting very fat and and we're talking to the tune of billions of dollars tens of billions of dollars. And meanwhile, we castigate our friend, our ally, the one that is the democracy that keeps peace in the region. Uh, We hold them up to account uh, because they don't want to play ball with the the U.S. domestic political proclivities of the day. It's It's unfortunate. And what it does is it prolongs the excruciating pain of getting those hostages back. Israel, as we're talking right now, has circled the Hamas brigades that are left in the center of Gaza because they believe that the hostages are there and they're going to go get them. Um, but, but the rule is clear. Ha- Hamas has two choices, surrender or be destroyed. There's no other thing. Otherwise, all these terror groups will be taking hostages forever, forever and ever and ever. And that that is not a problem for an administration that is cravenous to hold on to power uh, through a political cycle where it doesn't it doesn't look like they're going to be able to be successful. You know, General Blaine Holt, uh, I think to myself, if if there is a policy of appeasement that comes from Israel, from Netanyahu, from the IDF, and they they do uh, agree to. All right, let's just stop. 
I, I agree with you. I think you're right that they will continue to take hostages through these underground tunnels and continue to fight another day. It, it almost seems to me that uh, while they're getting hit really hard by the Israelis, the reason that they haven't given up and raised uh, the white flag of surrender is because they know that their sugar daddy, the Ayatollah in Iran, will continue to fund these battles. And I think they're just they're in it to win it. You know, they're ready to strap on the suicide vest and go for broke. Do you think I'm off? No, I think you're exactly right on. Let's let's rewrite the history a little bit. Let's say that when October 7th happened and we have no idea still how such a thing could happen with such a oversight and walls and uh, surveillance that was around Gaza. But that's another matter. But let's say that um, this occurred and the hostages were taken, and yet the United States immediately shut down the Houthis. I mean like shock and awe, uh, like vaporize the Houthis. If we do have that capability, whether people believe that or not, doesn't matter. Go back to uh, 2003 and find out what we did in Baghdad, and you'll find out we do have that capability. If we had done that, if we had cut off all the money to Iran, if we had made sure that everybody understood the Houthis were a terrorist organization, if we had uh, taken action against Hezbollah immediately when the Israelis needed us to, we would be well on the path to those hostages being home and Hamas as an organization being eradicated. We did none of those things. And as a result of that weakness, we find the other jackals in this world, China, North Korea, and Russia bearing down hard on us because they understand there's limited amount of time. They, this is quite an opportunity to take advantage of a United States that is so anemic with a, academics running its foreign policy. Well put. General, stand by. We're going to take a quick pause right here, and then we're going to come back and get your final thoughts. Folks, we're on with retired Brigadier General Blaine Holt. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. All right, amigos, and straight ahead at the top of the next hour, we've got Open Phone America. That's where you guys get to call in any topic. It gets on the air. We get to have a quick discussion about it. You know the number, 833-4-VALDEZ, and I, I'm looking forward to speaking with our peeps in Oregon, California, Hawaii, Alaska, New York, Chicago, and so many more as the calls are trickling in right now. But before we get to Open Phones, I want to finish up with our guest, Brigadier General Blaine Holt. Now, he's retired from the United States Air Force, where he served as the United States a Deputy uh, Representative to NATO for the United States. Blaine Holt, they're telling people to leave Lebanon. We've got a minute or so remaining. What's going on? I think it's the safest thing that you could possibly do. I have dear friends who are Lebanese in Lebanon, and I'm talking to them daily about what they should do. They're now on a waiting list to get out. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that Hezbollah could turn very quickly to using the Lebanese as human shields, and then Lebanon will eventually want to try to help to expel them. But this could be the end of Hezbollah as we know it, and if it is, it will come with a lot of bloodshed in, unfortunately, Beirut and the rest of Lebanon. And so prayers for Lebanon. If you are in Lebanon, try to get out if you can. If not, hunker down and be safe, yeah. and that's the and best we can hope for. General, quickly let everybody know how they can find you. You can find me at Newsmax. Uh, you can find me at Newsmax.com on Insiders, the Irascible Disruptor, or Restore-Liberty.org, where we are respecting our Constitution and making sure it's in the forefront of the American people. Lane Holt, you are a gentleman, a scholar, and a patriot. If you're ever in New York City, I owe you a beer, my brother. <laughs> I'm ready to pay for it myself, brother. You take care. All right, my man. Folks, we come back with you, the American people, calling in open phones across America, 833-482-5337, 833-4-Valdez. And, man, I got this crazy audio clip from a Philly radio station I'm going to play for you. That blew me away. Don't go anywhere. I'm Rich Valdez. Live. 
from the city that never sleeps. 17 miles from Madison Square Garden, New York City. It's America at Night with Rich Valdez, America's favorite late night talk program, featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across America. And now, here is your host, Rich Valdez. Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media. Happy to be here with you. This is our number three. We are live, we are national, and we like to call it Open Phones Across America. If you want the number, here it comes, 833-4825-337-8334, Valdez. And if you're just tuning in and you missed the first two hours of the show, let your local station know you want to hear the other two hours. And, of course, um... I will bring you up to speed on what's going on. Obviously, uh, a lot of news today. Uh, the big story of the day, there was a big stock market uh, collapse, crash in Japan. It trickled its way over here. Our uh, our markets uh, had a major sell-off, and it did not look good. Uh, we had former White House economist Vance Ginn on the program, and he said that while um, it was disappointing, it wasn't a surprise. Uh, the government's continued spending and money printing has put us in this situation, and we can expect some more of it before there's further corrections. And he said this in and of itself was a healthy correction, what we saw today. Uh, he also indicated that this is not the end of the dollar, and of course time will tell. But this is a guy that worked for Trump in the White House, did not think that this was uh, the end of the road. But he did say that we may... Uh, potentially join the BRICS consortium as they're selling off gold and potentially looking at something else. What that something else is, he doesn't know, but he does know that they're on to something if they're dumping gold. And um, gold also plummeted today, which was not good news for anybody who's holding uh, physical gold. I think it closed up, though, uh, at 2440. And I know a couple of months ago, I made a small purchase and it was 2350. So it's still up from that number. But We'll see how that continues to go. But that was uh, the markets today. And and we'll look at the markets tomorrow, too, because, you know, these things um, don't just happen and then disappear. Of course, there was the um, attack. That's all we could say, right? A, an ambush on Al-Assad Air Base. Uh, U.S. troops were hit. Uh, other service members as well. The number they're giving is several. No exact number on that. And... This is uh, exacerbating a conflict that could be potentially the the beginning of World War III. Brigadier General Blaine Holt was on the show. Uh, he's a former deputy representative to NATO for the United States. And he said that the Russians were just meeting in Tehran. Uh, there's, uh, you know, speculation that they may want to be involved with this conflict. And if that's the case, you'll now have Russia and Iran, you know, forming a, an axis of evil, if you will, that will be against the United States and mainly Israel, right? With Israel being the United States proxy fighting the proxy war. Of course, Iran has all of its uh, groups that report to it, like uh, the Houthi rebels, Hezbollah, and of course Hamas, which uh, Israel has been almost a year now pummeling and still going at it. They're holding strong. And I think that's also because Israel's shown remarkable restraint because of the way that they fight in Hamas. They hide behind women and children in schools and mosques, etc. So that was part of what we talked about earlier today. And then, of course, uh, we, uh, we had talked with Joe Exotic, the Tiger King from the Netflix program, who uh, called into the show, asked if he could come on and, and make an announcement uh, I said, sure, I'd love to have another chat with you. And he announced that his write-in campaign, he was, had a, he was conducting a campaign, joeexotic2024.com was the website he announced last time he was here. He, today he said, I'm suspending that campaign, and then made the uh, bold announcement of endorsing Donald J. Trump for president. Uh, so he did this all from a federal prison, which is what the irony of it, right? It's so rich, the whole story. Uh, the, the star of the Netflix series, The Tiger King, in jail for conspiracy to commit murder and um, fighting that case 
and uh, has lots of um, meritorious arguments of why it, it looks like lawfare against him and uh, making those pronouncements the last time he was here, this time just doubling down on saying, look, he might have disagreements with Trump, but Trump is the only way uh, into the future. And uh, that was a good conversation. If you missed any portion of those, make sure you check them out at richvaldez.com. But I want to get your thoughts on that and everything else that we've talked about tonight, uh, as well as Kay Malaeres, who continues to um, hide, right? She hasn't had a major press conference. She did this rally with the rapper Megan Thee Stallion. And, uh, of course, Megan Thee Stallion is very popular. And a lot of people beating her up for the lyrics and whatnot. But I'll tell you this, look, and again, maybe that's just me, uh, the cloth that I'm cut from being a Puerto Rican kid from Brooklyn. But that lives in Jersey now. But I'll tell you this. If I was Trump, if I were running for president, or if I was me, forget being Trump, if I was me running for president and some reggaeton superstar, that is the uh, Puerto Rican reggae that's out there, if, if some reggaeton superstar was like, oh, man, I, I, we'll do a concert for you, I don't know, you know, Daddy Yankee or, or any of the big ones, you know, uh, Bad Bunny, and, and they said, yeah, I'll do a, a concert for you, and you could fill up a stadium, fill up Madison Square Garden, and you can, you know, do your campaign stuff. I'm not going to say no to that. I want to get all these, these people in front of me so I could tell them about my campaign message. So, yes, Bad Bunny talks about all sorts of crazy things. The guy's had, like, transsexuals in his videos. It's not something I endorse. But, again, when you're running for president, you're not necessarily looking for uh, things that you endorse, per se. You're looking for people to vote for you, Right? They, they care about what you believe, but you can't care about what they believe, right? Whether they're pro-choice or pro-life, whether they're, uh, they hate the Second Amendment or they're pro-gun, you want their vote. You want to bring them over to your side because ultimately you're going to be elected as president of these United States, not of the Republicans that voted for you, the independents that voted for you, and not the Democrats that didn't vote for you. It doesn't work that way. You're president of all for all. So I think... A good idea for Kim Malaeres to do that that rally with um, Megan Thee Stallion. She got some great footage of her in a filled-up rally. And, and look, that's good for her. I'm not rooting her on in any way. I'm just saying, always put the shoe on the other foot. If I were, if I were Trump, I would do it. And, and you know, because there was a lot of comparison. This is what they're about. This is what we're about. That's fine. That's fine. You could do that. But I, I just think sometimes these are these are nonsensical arguments that that really missed the mark. The mark is clear here. The Democrats, Kemal Aires, Joe Biden, are destroying the economy. They're destroying the dollar. They're destroying my future and my children's future. That's it. That's the campaign message. You want to add to it? No problem. We've got a wide open border. They're giving everything away, including the kitchen sink. I mean, we're in bad shape, right? And we pretend, we pretend, and we pretend. There's a story here. Let me see if I find it real fast, just to quickly share it with you. All right, maybe I don't have it. Oh, here it is. Biden administration, Treasury, is being accused of trying to juice the U.S. economy pre-election. This proves that everything, even the, the wonky bond market auctions, can turn into a political fight. All right? And for the past year, short-term debt or Treasury bills have been about 20% of all outstanding debt. We talked about this with... Uh, Heritage economist E.J. Antoni uh, a little while back, and he was explaining how if these things all come home to roost at the same time, we're screwed because they're worth less than when people invested in them plus zero percent uh, of increase. It doesn't make sense to buy them. So nobody wants them because of inflation. So we have to bring inflation down for these investments to make sense for people, the T-bills. So anyway, I'm getting off track there. The point that I wanted to make was that the Democrats are not doing a great job. And I want to get to your calls, and we're going to get to those uh, now. Let me see. Where do we go? Let's go to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, KDKA. Jim, go right ahead. You're on with Rich Valdez. Great show. And I agree with the general. Um, when I was at the University of Pittsburgh in 1974, I took a class from Professor Richard Cottom. He was the leading expert of Iran. He actually worked for the CIA. He didn't tell us that. But I learned a hell of a lot about Iran. And I'll just tell you this. He, everything he said, I did owe it, what Holt said. But I'll add another thing to it. Iran doesn't care about the, going into war. It's like the octopus. You have to cut the top of the octopus off. All, those, all the tentacles are Hezbollah. 
Hamas, the two Houthis, mm -hmm. their finger is on all the fires. And even better, um, the sanctions that Trump had, he, they, they were let go by Joe Biden. And Trump is right. Um, he's right because Iran was uh, broke and Russia and Iran want oil prices high. Now, I'll tell you the reason why the market went down. Two reasons. I had I majored in economics, okay, and uh, I minor in economics, major in political science. Now, the second reason is not only are the job market go down, but a lot of jobs are two jobs. People doing you know two different jobs, yeah, so work. they're kind of double job, okay. And also the threat of the war over the Middle East. It's a double whammy. That's why, yeah. in my opinion, why the, why um, England's throwing off the gold because they can see what's coming. They're in a situation room tonight, tonight. Because um, Iran, uh, their boy, Hezbollah, he was taken out with a bomb under his bed. Yeah, he took it out. Yes, they did. They, Israel planted a bomb under the guy's bed who ordered to attack uh, Hamas. So they killed him. So I saw the Ayatollah Khomeini, the supreme leader. He was on um, going through the whole parliament. And the, uh, the mm -hmm. Russian, I mean, the Iranian president is just a puppet. Uh, absolutely. Up. And it's always been that way. I feel like there's always an Ayatollah. There's always the, the mullahs. There's always uh, these these figureheads. I'm not sure who exactly pulls the strings, but they're always up to the same no good. Uh, but the reality, though, is they um, they really did send the message today hitting the U.S. at Al-Assad Air Base. And this is something that we can't take lying down. The United States must react. And honestly, again, and I hate to sound like I'm always giving advice to Kim Edis, but I'm rooting for America here. I really am. And she happens to be the vice president. Joe Biden happens to be the president. Uh, if anybody cares to do better in your polls, get on television and say, we're going to stand up for the Americans. We're going to stand up for our, our service people that were hit today. We're going to stand up for the red, white, and blue, and we're going to hit you back. And I don't mean blowing up some empty warehouse or going and killing some uh, innocent family in retaliation. I'm talking about actually retaliating and taking these people out that did this the way the IDF and, and Netanyahu and the Israelis did to this um, uh, the Hamas leader whose name escapes me, Hariemi or whatever it is. I, I never know how to say it. Anyway, that's what has to be done. Jim in Pittsburgh, thanks for your kind words and the uh, geopolitical lesson from your perspective. I appreciate it. Folks, we continue with your calls and more straight ahead. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-482. 833 for Valdez. That's Valdez with an S. No hair, no care. And live on the air, it's Rich Valdez. But I got to ask you about Kamala Harris. How you feel about her? She's a piece of shit. I was in California. She lacked professional competence, and she worked on it by hiking up her hemline when she needed influence rather than researching. She's always tried to do the casting couch to get where she wants. That is Judge Joe Brown commenting on K. Malaeris. Uh, then, um, you know, obviously he knows her from her days as a prosecutor and attorney general and U.S. senator for California. And, of course, now as candidate for president of the United States as the sitting vice president. Uh, I want to go to one of our uh, OGs on the program, Gil, calling us from Manila in the Philippines, listening on richvaldez.com. Go right ahead. Yes, uh, that was, uh, uh, you kind of stole my thunder. I wanted to talk about uh, Judge Joe Brown's comments about... Uh, what do you think about his comments? Eddie. Well, uh, you left out uh, some of the best parts. Uh, he contends that she is not part African-American, that uh, her Jamaican roots were uh, British because, of course, Jamaica is part of the British Empire, and uh, that uh, her uh, 
uh, ancestors from Jamaica were uh, were, were Anglo-Saxon. So um, she gets her skin color from uh, her roots, uh, her Hindu roots in India. But um, that's uh, what I wanted to say, and I was going to suggest that you try to get Judge Joe Brown on as a guest. Ah, yeah, it's not a bad idea. I wonder if he is, uh, if he can say que mala eres as well as you do. Well, he was on TV for quite a while, and uh, he had the same producer as Judge Judy. Oh, get uh, out. I didn't know about that. By, yeah, he was discovered by Judge Judy's uh, uh, producer and put him on, on the air on his courtroom show. So uh, he's quite a guy. Uh, he's a Democrat. He's run for political office as a Democrat uh, in uh, Tennessee. And uh, if, uh, I've got an interesting Wikipedia page. Uh, and uh, he's had right. been around well, for some time. And he's had his- I'll check it out. Gil in Manila, Philippines. Thank you, sir. And thanks for uh, giving a shout out to our favorite nickname for the vice president, Que Mala Eres. I appreciate it. Uh, let's go to Tom. Tom is calling us from Akron, Ohio on WNIR. Tom, go right ahead. You're on with Rich Valdez. Oh, yes. I I, um, I know how it's going to go. She's going to do the identity politics and... Uh, so she's going to sell to herself just like Joe Biden. Now, I grew up with uh, these people, and I grew up with these people, and these people were in my community. And let's just call it what it is. Her new name is Kmart, you know? <laughs> That's so, clever. You know, let's just call it. And you know what's funny is Kmart went out of business, Tom. So uh, hopefully she'll be out of business soon enough. Tom in Akron, Ohio on WNIR. Thank you for the call, brother. Kmart, that's funny. Kmart Harris. Uh, It might take some getting used to, but I think we can do it. Let's uh, continue our conversation. Uh, Let's go to Salem, Arkansas, KSAR, and check in with our buddy Joe. Joe, go right ahead. You're on with Rich Valdez. Yeah, Rich. um, Hey, thank you for your kindness to the incarcerated like Joe Exotic there. I, you bet. I, every time he's on, boy, I, I learn what's going on on the inside there, and that's quite interesting. I don't believe he conspired to murder anyone. Uh, oh, yeah, me either. <laughs> the, the only thing I, I got different with, I like everything he said, except Nikki Haley. He, Yeah. Uh, he's, you know, uh, you're right. You're right. I thought, I thought Nikki Haley was not a great choice either, uh, because ultimately I think there's a, a, dis, uh, a disloyalty problem there with Trump. I don't think it works well for him. Um, and I think that's really what he was looking for and why he went with Vance. A, he can sell uh, the um, why I'm with Trump now and why I hated Trump before, whereas Nikki Haley can't, right? And we saw that at the RNC where she uh, tried to make the case for, I'm with Trump and this and that, and you should vote for him too. And it came across as, uh, I don't know, less than genuine is what I'm going to say. Whereas J.D. Vance, I think, makes a very genuine case for his support for Trump. Um, irrespective of anything else. Joe in Salem, Arkansas. The music means I got to go. Thank you for your call, brother. Folks, we're coming right back. Open Phone America with me, Rich Valdez. Don't go anywhere. radio six years in a row it's rich valdez call now 833-4-VALDEZ that's 833-482-5337 833-4-VALDEZ that's valdez with an s all right amigos welcome back make sure you get your calls in because if you don't get them in now then by the end of the show there's a million people holding on and i'm not able to get to everybody and i always feel badly about that uh, so the number 833-4-VALDEZ. But check this out. I want to just continue on the topic we were on, but I want to add to it with uh, something a little bit different because uh, something that happened a month and a half ago 
I saw today on Instagram. Somebody sent me something, and I looked at it, and I said, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I missed this. And it was really interesting. It's a, a, a call, like just like this, a call-in radio show out of Philly, and a station called Q102. And a woman calls in, and she's proposing that the letter P be added to the LGBTQ I guess that's not an acronym, but I'm going to use that word right now, mnemonic, whatever it is. I don't know the the right term, but uh, abbreviation, excuse me. And she wants the word P added to it to include pedophiles. Now, one would think that this is crazy and sick, but she takes this logical approach as if it makes sense somehow. Listen to this. Um, I work with IPCE. If you don't know, that's International Pedophile and Child Emancipation. And our goal is to abolish the stigmatization of people with pedophilic sexual interests and normalizing the potential role in moderating pedophiles' emotional well-being. I know that's a mouthful. Wait, before we get any further. What are we saying right now? Yeah, this this is sounds disgusting. Are you saying you're a pedophile? No, I'm not saying that I'm a pedophile <clears throat> in the sense that I've never had sexual relations with a person under age. But you're saying we should accept pedophiles? That's illegal. Well, I just don't believe we should be shunning those in our community that have desires to engage in a romantic relationship with someone in a drastically different age group. So you're saying you support pedophiles? I'm saying I support love. Okay. And just because America views ages like 18 as some sort of imaginary bar or a line in the sand for humans to engage in romantic relationships doesn't mean it's right. So you don't I see mean, anything other- wrong with a 20-year-old dating a 12-year-old? That's not what I'm saying. But listen, in, in Nigeria, the age of consent is 11. It's 14 in other countries like Brazil, Colombia. If we're taking them, <clears throat> excuse me. If we're taking a month as a country to showcase our pride for other communities of sexual exploration, then I think we should add the letter P, which is just as important as the L, G, B, and T. Now, I didn't interrupt that because I could have interrupted it and I spent a half hour on this one uh, minute and 20 second clip. She said so many things that I could just go on so many tangents on. Number one, she says this imaginary number of 18, ma'am. Pendeja, sangana, estupida, forgive me. This idiotic woman says, no, this is not um, imaginary. The number is not imaginary at all. It's the law. Am I the only one that got that? Then she goes on to say that they ask very good uh, qualifying questions, right? Uh, Excellent qualifying questions. And she, in turn, responds, are you saying you're in favor of this? No, I'm in favor of love. Uh, okay. Uh, then she says the other thing, uh, well, it's because it's whatever. No, just imagine, um, we start, I don't know. We start citing places where you're allowed to kill people. You know, maybe some of the, um, countries in the middle East where women are allowed to be killed for whatever infraction they may have committed. And we just got, well, you know, in whatever country you can just stone a woman for doing whatever. So I don't, I don't understand the problem. You don't understand the problem. We're in the United States. You're not allowed to do that. Again, I don't want to repeat every uh, expletive that I can in Spanish, but for real, come on, lady. This is absolutely ridiculous. I want to get your thoughts on this, adding the the letter P to uh, LGBTQ, uh, because that is not uh, covert. It is very overt that they're trying to hijack a movement and they're trying to normalize something that should not be normalized. We had the other guys saying that they're minor attracted people. Excuse me, please. I I don't know. I don't know why this hits such a nerve with me, but uh, I guess, you know, having children, I think, changes you. You know, had I heard this, you know, when I was pre-dad, I probably would have been like, oh, whatever. That's their opinion. They're entitled to it. (laughs) But after you have kids, you're like, hold on a second. What does this lady do for a living? Is she going to somehow end up anywhere near a child? Because she says, well, I've never... I've never acted on, I don't know if you caught that part, but she said she'd never acted on anything, meaning so she loves younger people and just never acted on it, so that makes her not a pedophile. It makes her a minor attracted person. Please get the entire F out of here with that type of nonsense. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Now, if you want to try and argue with me, and you may get somewhere with that argument saying, you never thought about killing somebody, then, you know, Jesus says you're just as guilty as killing people. 
Well, that's what I'm going to say to you. If you're, if you're thinking about messing around with little kids, you're, you're, in, you're in bad shape. You need help, and you should stay away from little kids, and you shouldn't be calling uh, morning radio programs saying that we should add the letter P to LGBTQ. Absolutely crazy. Wow. Anyway, uh, I want to get your thoughts on that, plus K Malayas and everything else that we're talking about, because honestly, it's, uh, it's crazy in my opinion. Uh, let's go to the West Coast, Pendleton, Oregon, K-U-M-A. Michael, go uh, right ahead. Yeah, Rich. Hey, great talking to you uh, again, Rich. Thank uh, you, sir. Yeah, I was calling, um, you know, my two favorite shows, of course, your show and uh, the great Billy Cunningham on Sunday. Oh, yeah, uh, I appreciate we get him here. Uh, the great American. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, he had a very good um, segment on the show about J.D. Vance. And what an outstanding um, choice and person he is. Well, he's uh, from Ohio. Uh, Yes, Uh, and I think President Trump knew what he was doing. He made a very good choice there with J.D. Vance. But what was uh, really amazing, uh, Rich, was his life. I think his book is like Hillbillyography, I believe. Uh, Hillbilly Elegy. And there's a movie by the same name that I have not checked out as of yet, but... People keep telling me, literally every day, somebody tells me, have you seen this movie? I think it's on Netflix. They're saying, you got to check out the movie. So I'm, I'm likely going to be checking out the movie. Uh, yes, Rich. Uh, that's, that's the title. Excuse me on that. Uh, sure. But he came from just a very uh, unprivileged background. Uh, very, uh, the odds were stacked against him. He had a, a dysfunctional family in many aspects. Uh, he had to overcome that. Um, and he ended up going into the Marines, and that he did. really helped turn his life life around. 100%, and he mentioned a lot of that in the uh, RNC when he gave his speech. And, and again, I don't really know a ton about J.D. Vance. I've never interviewed him. I've never spoken to him. I've never met him in any of the uh, events that I've been to. Uh, he's as new to me as he is to you. I just know his campaign and, and his um, his rhetoric when he didn't like Trump. I remember hearing that, and uh, it's, I think... Uh, Listen, I am of the belief, and this is not to discredit um, Senator Vance in any way, uh, but I've always believed Trump, this is Trump. The, the campaign is Trump. Trump is the face of the movement. This is his to, to, to lose in many ways, right? And whomever he picks, whether he picks Michael from Pendleton, Oregon, uh, Rich Valdez from, from, from the East Coast, whomever he picks, I think he wins uh, because – I just think it that the timing is right. He's put in the work. People agree with what he's got to say, and they trust the record that he left behind. Um, that being said, I don't think it's going to hurt him to have J.D. Vance. I think that it, it can actually add a little bit. Uh, but there's a lot of people that could have added. So, uh, again, not to his detriment or anything like that, just making the, the point that this is a largely Trump-driven thing, and anybody that he brought on was going to benefit from riding those coattails. Michael in Pendleton, Oregon, K-U-M-A. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate your call. Uh, let's continue. I want to go to, let's say we were just talking about Ohio. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's go to Jackie in Medina, Ohio, W-N-I-R. Go right ahead. You're on with Rich Valdez. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, oh, I listen to your show in the evenings, and Um, I had a question about something that ABC News broadcast before the 2020 election. Um, They they quoted Bloomberg as saying he would spend any amount of money necessary to defeat Donald Trump. And I was just wondering um, who got the money and what did they do with it? Yeah, I don't know that he put that money into it because I think what ended up happening was after he made those statements, um, I I remember Trump eviscerating him, right? That was during the primary. And uh, and and him saying, uh, yeah, yeah, Mike Bloomberg in his box, right? Little little Mike, little Mike, little Mike in his box. He's got to step on a box. So you could see him over the podium. I mean, he just really trashed him. And I think after uh, enough of the trashing, Bloomberg disappeared. And honestly, I've never seen Bloomberg again. Uh, I mean, a couple of statements and little news clips about him, you know, and his anti-gun crusade, uh, donating to all sorts of anti-gun programs, anti-Second Amendment stuff. But uh, I really haven't seen him largely involved in, in, in anything. And uh, likely because, you know, 
Trump called him out for having a little box to step on, which, you know, listen, I'm not that tall. I'm 5'8". So um, I could use a little box myself sometimes. <laughs> and Trump's a tall guy. Trump's a tall guy. There's a lot of guys that are tall that, you know, they don't realize, uh, how's life up there? Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that there was a ton of money. And if there was, he probably donated to the, the pack of his choice. Uh, but that was a long time ago. And I don't think he's one of the, the major funders. Now, again, I could be wrong and we'll look into it. And if we find out anything to the contrary, we'll let you know, Jackie. But thank you for your call. Medina, Ohio, in the building, WNIR. Always appreciate hearing from our good friends in Ohio. J.D. Vance country, by the way. And uh, let me see. Can I? I'll pause right here and we'll come right back with the rest of your calls from all over the place. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDES. That's Valdez with an S. I was 20. Um, <laughs> look, I have said for years, years, long before October 7th, um, that I favor a two-state solution. Uh, Israelis and Palestinians living peacefully side by side, being able to determine their own futures and their own destinies, being able to work as they want and worship as they want. That is uh, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. Both him and Tim Walls, uh, one of them is expected to be announced tomorrow by Kemalaeris as her vice presidential pick. But what's interesting here is the media, the Wall Street Journal, a bunch of people quickly said the problem with Josh Shapiro is that he's Jewish and he's made some comments that disparage uh, the Palestinians and he's still there doing damage control for this. And this has taken a lot of people by storm, a lot of people very upset by this because they're saying, what do you mean that's a problem that he's Jewish? That's anti-Semitic. Uh, the, and and it, it very well may be. But the um, the issue, I believe, is that they're saying it doesn't pair well with Que Malaeres, who is uh, relatively anti-Israel. So how do you have this pro-Israel and anti-Israel on the same ticket? Um, some people might say it's a match made in heaven so that you appeal to the broader masses. But again, on the left, they think you've got to agree lockstep or you can't move forward. So anyway, I want to um, get your thoughts on do we... Expect Josh Shapiro, governor of Pennsylvania, to get selected as vice president to Kim Malaeres, or does she pick Governor Tim Walz? Let's go to Jerome, Charleston, South Carolina, WTMA. Go right ahead. Hello? America's listening, Hello? Jerome. Yes. I can't, I can't wait till she picks Mr. Shapiro Cruz so we can see just how big of an anti-Semite the Republicans are. I mean, they've already shown it time and time again, but hey. Well, what makes you think the Republicans are anti-Semites? I, I've never met a Republican that wasn't pro-Israel and a, a big supporter of Israel. So where are you getting this from? No, you ain't never met one, right? Hey, how about Trump? You ever met him? Ever yeah, the one that has a Jewish on? daughter. And a Jewish granddaughter, a Jewish son-in-law, the one that moved the embassy from um, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the one that uh, put the Abraham Accords into place, the one that is beloved by Netanyahu, that one? Is that the one you're saying is an anti-Semite? Yeah. Hey, two of us Jewish lawyers are going to prison to protect them, too. That's the love for Jews, right? Well, that's I don't understand what you're saying, but how I'm trying to get to the bottom here. How do you expect, uh, which Republicans are anti-Semitic? You name them. And the whole party You name is. it. Can you and tell you me know. which dem- which party, Democrat or Republican, has always been a supporter of, of the Jewish state? Oh, yeah, you support Jews. That's why, uh, that's why I went out, they called uh, the vice president's husband a horrible Jew, right? You love Jewish people, don't you? I love the Jewish people. 
I grew up with the Jews in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm just really confused because typically they, they call us Zionist shills, right? And they say that we're sold out for the Jews and that all we do is defend the Jews and that we hate Hamas and we hate the Palestinians and we are warmongers. And that's usually the critique that I get. I've never gotten the anti-Semite uh, critique, honestly. Yeah, right. You love black people too, don't you? Love black people. Oh, My next do. wife sure will likely do. be black. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. You gonna vote for Kamala? You love black people? You gonna vote for Kamala? Kamala well, Harris? There's debate on whether she's black or not. But the bigger question is, will I vote for Kamala? Probably not, because she's been horrible for most people's pockets. She's been horrible for the border. She's been horrible on the economy. She's been horrible in just about anything that means anything to me. So it doesn't matter what color she is. She could be Puerto Rican. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not voting for her based on race because I, I don't think I've ever voted for anybody based on race, Jerome. Why would I do that? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. I don't believe a thing you say, man. I don't no? believe a thing you say. You just like Bohannon, man. You just like Oh, Bohannon. thank you. That's one, a compliment. You, you look one way, one way on the outside, on the inside, you're totally different, man. You How do I look on the outside? No, I mean the way you the way you act on the inside. You're never going to tell people you hate people because that'd be bad for your job, man. Hey, but what people you know, do I hate? Why would I hate people? Because I need, they're look, not like you. That's right. You bad for white yourself. Yeah, no. Thank you. Uh, but he, here's the thing: uh, if I don't have guys like you, Jerome, calling me and hating on me, I don't get the ratings that I get. If I don't have people calling me telling me they love the show, I don't get the ratings that I get. So either way, I need I need the lover and the hater of this show to call me in order to win. So I love everybody. I don't hate you. I just hate the way you think and the way you talk. That's fine. You're obvious, and man. you see, and the big difference here is I don't hate the way that you think. And I don't think that you're my enemy. I think you're my brother, and I love having you on the show. Jerome, thanks for the call. Folks, you're coming right back. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, America, welcome back. Amigos, we hit the speed round here. Let's go to Rochester, New York, K-R-O-C. Jim, go right ahead quickly. Hey, Rich, master class. An absolute master class dealing with that last guy. Ah, Great thanks. job. I mean, it, was, it was just the guy was flying all over the place, and you just sat back and went, well, okay, let's talk about this. Well, okay, <laughs> let's look at it this way. The guy drifted away. Nice yeah. job, man. Nice Thank job. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Sometimes you just have to because it seemed like he might have been off his rock or off his meds or just angry at me, <laughs> whatever the case was, but I still love him. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate the call. Let's go to Frank Evergreen, Montana, K-O-F-I. Go for it quickly. Okay. First off, uh, it's a progressive uh, Bonzi uh, perverts for Camilla or whatever. What do you call Camilla anyway? Is that a, a cigarette for uh, perverts? <laughs> I, I call her Camilla Eres. Thank you. I appreciate it, brother. And let's go to Andrew, Chicago, Illinois on WLS. Go right ahead. Quickly. Okay. I just wanted to say something about um, the Republican Quickly. and uh, being anti-Semitic. Richard Nixon was one of the best supporters of Israel. He, he was anti-Semitic. Harry Truman, same thing. Okay, great. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate the contribution. Andrew in Chicago, Illinois on WLS. I guess we'll finish that conversation tomorrow. Uh, but today, I haven't seen too many anti-Semitic Republicans. Don't go anywhere, folks. There's more to come straight ahead. I'm Rich Valdez.